Well, welcome to a little visit about an income statement. All the financial statements that we're going to talk about, of course, are very, very important when you're talking about business. But uh, the income statement is going to show us some things about our business that are, are just paramount to uh, the running of the business, the longevity, the legacy that we're building, and that sort of thing. So we're going to spend, I'm going to spend a little bit of a bit of time explaining some of the intricacies. I've got one in the background here. I'm the one with the bobblehead over in the, the lower right hand corner. But uh, anyway, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. I've uploaded some Khan Academy uh, videos that might help you in understanding the uh, importance and the essence of an income statement. Um, the income statement is also referred to as the P&L or the profit and loss statement. And of course, the profit. What, why is that so important? Well, because we don't operate for very long without a kind of a profit. Uh, we, in agriculture, actually, many operations have been operating actually with a deteriorating equity position. And that's what's given them the ability to stay in business. But over the long term, and in agriculture, again, and I repeat myself a lot, so I apologize for that, but in, in, in a farming and ranching operation, and any business for that matter, if, if we don't actually have more good years, meaning with positive profits, then we're definitely going to not be able to continue the business. And I would adhore you, or actually encourage you, I would say, is to think of a farmer ranch as any other kind of business, especially in this kind of thing. We just have to be really passionate about it. We really like to do what we do, but it's got to be profitable in order to, uh, in order to continue on. Okay, so anyway, profits are really, really important if we don't pay attention to that part of it. We just don't, uh, we won't be around long. And, and maybe that's for the good in a lot of cases. The survival of the fittest kind of model is, uh, is somewhat of what we're talking about here. If you don't have long-term sustainable profits, then you know, you're just a flash in the pan. You might do what you're, you do and enjoy what you do, but you won't be around for very long. Um, anyway, here, here is uh, the income statement. This is actually an operation that we used in one of our farm management contests in the state here recently. Some of you may, have act, may actually recognize it, some might not. Uh, a pretty healthy operation. We have cash revenues on the upside of over $21 million there. And then we can look at all of our expenses. All we are doing in a profit loss is showing our revenues versus our expenses and finding out what the difference is. That's what a profit is, an accounting profit is. Okay, um, there are some things that we can do to this to make a better and more accurate picture for it. And this income statement actually points out some of the deficiencies in, in how we operate or how we look at things. And I want to point that out and again, try to be as brief as possible. But you'll notice this is a, this is a, a, a large cattle operation, um, has uh, cash revenues of over $21 million, um, and then uh, over $16 million worth of expenses, has almost a half a million in depreciation. And uh, you have a net farm income from operations of almost five million dollars. Okay, there are some operations like this around, and uh, I never ran a business like this, and most of you won't. But uh, um, it is it, still we can evaluate this on its own terms. Okay, and one of the things that uh, if we didn't have a positive net income here, we certainly would not be uh, in it for the long haul at least and we're mostly thinking about we want to look at this number as a as a trend over the years okay and usually you know with only a few sales during the years agricultural operations will look at the income statement at the end of the year now here's where we get into trouble 
And I, I, many of you have taken some accounting classes. Some of you may be accountants. And we, we actually, I think, and this is my opinion, but evaluate our businesses on the basis of we must minimize the amount of tax. Well, that, that's only part of the equation. And, and this is where I'm getting at it, is that if we only look at it from there, we're going to be really, really short-sighted. I want to minimize my taxes because I want to pay the least amount. But I want to, at the same time, actually in together, I want to maximize my net income. So, okay, if you're going to minimize the amount of tax, which is a cost to our business, you also synchrony, in synchrony, want to maximize the profits. That's the whole idea. And we have become too short-sighted in the fact that many times we can pay a little bit more tax, but actually maximize or increase the amount of profit for the business, which will add to the long-term sustainability of this business. So that's where I want you to go with this from now on in, in your business especially. If you can actually adapt to that, then you've got a big thing figured out as far as the longevity and building this legacy that we call your business. Whether it's a farm or ranch or it's just a little old Main Street business down on the corner, uh, those things all hold true. Now here again, I'm going to go back and just point out some things that uh, if, if we were going to take a truer picture of profitability, some of the things that we would add to this particular profit and loss statement would be changes in inventory. And that's one that uh, a lot of us in agriculture, we actually do most of our, our uh, profitability analysis on a cash basis. But I would encourage you to take a look at it on a, uh, an accrual basis because it gives us a whole lot better look at what the actual profitability of this business is. So just to give you an example, and this is, uh, I'm a hay, hay producer. So if, if I've got 100 tons of hay in 2014, we use this year here, and last year I only had 50 ton of carryover hay, I've got a difference of 50, uh, uh, did I say 100 tons? Okay, well, it, the numbers don't matter that much, but anyway, there's a difference, right? So in, in, in last year in 13, I had 50, and in this year I had 100, so the difference is of 50. So something happened to that change in inventory. So that would be reflected in my actual income statement so that I could show my actual profitability. Okay, so anything that might change, and I, I, any of these items that we have up here, purchased steers, raised heifers, uh, cull stock, corn silage, alfalfa hay, uh, and, and those kinds of things, those inventories could change, and we could have a negative or a positive increase to our net income. In that case, in the 2014 income statement, if we had a surplus of 50, 000, or 50 ton of hay, then the, that would increase our actual cash revenues for that business because it's just sitting there. It's like a savings account. We could sell it, but we just haven't yet. Okay, or we're gonna use it within our business, but we still have it. It's 50 ton more than we had last year. And we could have, we could have, a, in a negative sense, if, if we had 200 ton of, of hay left over in 2013 versus 100 ton of hay left over in 2014, then we would have the, the value of that 100 ton difference would be a decrease to our actual cash revenues in an accrual sense. Okay, it does not affect our pocketbook at this time. Those are cruel adjustments, but it actually will show a truer reflection of what our revenue would be. Okay, so and and this this particular profit loss statement has also another non-cash type of operating expense that we see down here in in the lower portion of the income statement that we can visit about. Depreciation is, is, is how we show on the income statement 
the amortization of assets over time, which is depreciation, okay? And we didn't talk about that with the balance sheet so much. Most of you have a pretty good grasp of that, but actually we, we can't capitalize in our business the to total purchase prices of assets, but we can do it in a, uh, in a fashion where we show the deterioration of a particular asset over time, which again, that's another way of saying depreciation and we can expense that out. Now, the only time we see any cash outflow is when we purchase that particular asset, but that can't be expensed in the first year of operation. And again, we're not talking about taxes, we're talking about business management here. Taxes, there's ways to do that. And we can visit about that later if you'd like to. There's all kinds of ways to do that but we're talking about actual profitability. So if we have a $10,000 tractor and we show it as a 10-year asset with no, uh, uh, no salvage value, then we're going to take $1,000 per year of that asset's life and we're going to expense it. And we're gonna show, that will be reflected on the actual income statement. And that's a non-cash expense to the income statement. If we don't do that, then we're showing all things on a cash basis. If we put that on our income statement for management purposes, we show a truer actual picture of our net income. And, and that's what we want to look at. We're going to expense most of our assets over the lifetime that we use them to show more accuracy. Anyway, I've went over my time that I was give, given to myself, look at your income statement. They're just as important to your balance sheet. One year is not going to tell you a whole lot other than you made a profit or you didn't. And, and uh, then actually uh, the trends are what counts. And one of the things, and I'll give you just a little bit of a hint here, and having been in business for over 30 years is that my profits started to increase when I intentionally started tracking them and looking at them. At first, it was a negative, which many of us have experienced. That's not a good thing. We've got to change that trend. We've got to make it profitable, even if it's just a little at a time. Most businesses don't change overnight. If you get a 5% of gross receipts in net income, then your next objective might be to have a 7, 8, 9, or 10 percent uh, percent of, of revenues as far as your profit goes. So you want to actually raise the bar. And the amazing part about it, once you intentionally start looking at this kind of stuff, you can actually do it. And I want to ask you one last question as we uh, come down to the end of this video is, is that I would challenge you as a business person, I won't test you over this. Other than in another 20 years or 5 or 10, I want you to call me up and say if it actually worked. Because it did for us. Is we actually imputed the profits that we wanted out of our business from the very beginning in our projections. And we stuck it in there and we showed it as a line item. It's actually an expense to the business because we cannot do without it. So... If you want a 5 or you want a 10 or a 15, you want to push it to 20, then I want you to actually, actually go in there and put it as a line item in your income statement. I challenge you to do that because it'll make you look at it and uh, hopefully look at it in a more healthy way so that we can have sustainable profits. That's the key. All right, over now.